What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Beats by Ash, coming at you with another banger of a video. We are getting into the goo today, that new new, that D&D icons content you have all been waiting for. I'm talking about the new playable planeswalker, Drizzt. Without further ado, if you enjoy this content and you want to see more in the future from me, make sure to hit subscribe and smash that like button. And as always, I will try not to take up as much of your time as I need to, so let's go into this brief depth profile so that I can get right to those matches for you guys. So starting off, we are playing one Elite Vanguard. This is okay starter. Uh, shields up has proved to be pretty value trap in the deck. Um, Untested Rookie is a fair early game one drop. Matron Malice is quite nice in the deck. And a lot of people find it hard to see what this does later in the game because the log is so hard to read. Um, then we have Peer the Dreamer, standard. Devoted Steed is okay. Um, it's a card that curves out on turn two. Um, the Clever is Zinderspit. This guy is a, you know, early game legendary. My thought process with the deck is play all of the legendaries that you can that are in the early game slots and have immediate agency to allow you to trigger your passive ability. Then we have one Termogoyf. This card is very nice. I don't play two because it takes time to stack up and I want to have early agency. Uh, I play two Colonian Tusker, standard best two drop in the game. Two Giant Growth, traps are very good in this deck. Um, Grudge Match, the best green removal spell. Then we play two Drizzt Herald, by, by far the best card in the deck. Um, and then we play two Watch Wolf, and then we play um, two Defend with Twinkle. All of the signature cards are in this person are amazing. I highly recommend you maximize them, and it is a um, good reason to pilot this person because he is somewhat budget considering that the event right now allows us to um, very easily earn Multicolor Essence, which are going to be most of the legendary cards in your deck. We play one Stone Forge Mystic, for the three drops because this is a nice card on curve and sometimes it allows you to protect your legendaries. One blind sign for an additional removal. Um, because of the color combinations, this deck is lacking in removal, so I decided to play one copy of this, then play two Heroes Call. It's, it's insane. Um, and then one Armadillo Cloak. This card is very good at protecting your legendaries. Uh, one Inferno. I like this card a lot because it has immediate agency and has the potential to gain infinite value. Then one Zozu, it's the most broken red mythic in the game. Um, and then one Tajik, probably my favorite mythic in the game. Um, so that's it for the deck profile. Thank you so much for getting this far in the video. I want to point out that I am so close to 100 followers on Twitch. So if you could, please take the time to go ahead and smash that button for me because I love coming out with this content and nobody is out there bringing it to you like me. All right, so we are into the first game. We are starting on the play. That is a very good sign. And we open up with three low-cost cards. I think I'm going to shovel back the shields up because our opponent should not have any early game advantage going for them. Um, I'm obviously going to keep the Matron Malice, and I'm going to look for some more legendaries. Okay? Colonian Tusker in the house. Let's see what's about to happen next, baby. Okay? I can deal with this. I can already feel the cats calling to me. Side note, I just want to point out, um, does anyone think that this person uh, resembles the main character of the brand new Game of Thrones show, House of Dragons, Prince Damon? Because I, I just felt like that, that I should bring that up because it's just been on my mind. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Sheesh. My guy has the turn one Talonian Tusker, which is fucking insane. Um, here, I think I'm just gonna shields up and take this man to value town. What I love about traps here is that, you know, if he does not, uh, block this, we can just remove it and go for another one. Sweet. Our opponent probably played into, uh, the fact that we are holding a trap, so, I mean, that's fine. It is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and unequip this. And then here, I think I'm going to go for... We can go for our own Colonial Tusker if we want. Um, the Devoted Steed would make it to where we trade... I think we're going to go ahead and Devoted Steed. The reason I'm doing that is just because uh, next turn, if this doesn't die, you know, we can always Shields up again, and eventually he's going to try to block this, you know? Uh, it's just creating even a value for us, so why not? 
I mean, the stat land on this cart is crazy. All right, let's go ahead and trigger his own trap card, if I do so mind. A lot of people are playing uh, this giant growth card from what I've seen. All right, so this is looking fairly nice to us. Let's go ahead and keep track of um, each card type in the graveyard. I know it's very hard to understand what is happening because the log is so bad, uh, but I will do my best to reminisce it. So currently, I mean, I guess we just have this and then we, yeah, we just have that. He never triggered our trap. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. We are obviously going to set up our shields up um, and then we're going to go ahead and grudge match on his boy. Um, this way we get our free kill and then our wolf is free to do work. So we're going to represent seven damage here, which is crazy. Seven damage turn three. Seven damage turn three. Let's go, boys. We are in this. You already know what it is. Mr. Beats by Ash, putting on the early pressure. What can you do, man? I'm just nice. Okay, so this is really strong for us. Um, our Tarmogoyf is getting plus six, plus six. Oh my gosh, man. We are big nice right now. Uh, let's go ahead and attack with this because uh, we have nothing else to attack right now. If he blocks this, I'm quite fine with that. Okay, he's just gonna get, get rid of this. I guess he values the card draw quite a bit. I don't think that's very important in this matchup, um, but to each their own. I'm gonna go ahead and play another legendary to get our stacks going. And then I'm just gonna drop down Tarmogoyf because it is fucking insane right here. Literally busted. Two mana, six, seven. You know? Uh, counting the types is for the opponent. Just as attacking is for no math and blocking is doing all the talking when it comes to the pen and paper. Does anybody else feel that this person's uh, hero power is a little bit underpowered? The fact that you heal yourself just by getting a mana gem is not what you're looking to do. It's just kind of an underpowered version of what Liliana does. And that's going to wrap it up for the game one. Thank you so much for letting us get that W, my friend. And to everyone watching at home, thank you for letting me teach you how to clap people up. You know, that is what I do. I am a professional clapper. All right, guys, and we are back. We are into the second game, and we are going into the mirror match. Let's see who can be the new cancer on the block. It's not Raw today. I'm hoping that I can end the party with a hooray. Okay. Um, I feel like this card is really insane, but, you know, we have a nice curve going. <clears throat> and this isn't legendary. I kind of want to get rid of this, and I'm hopefully going to hold our additional mana gem so that we can play this on the board on turn three. I think that's very nice. I feel like our hand is, you know, very fairly, you know, well met. We can go turn one pier with a turn two Talonian Tusker, which will put on some early pressure, you know. Um, turn two, we are going to be threatening five damage, so not bad at all. And then on turn three, we have the Tajik, <coughs> okay, and our opponent is going to pass. It's quite looking better for us than him. Um, let's go ahead and drop the Colonian Tusker here. I'm going to go ahead and swing at him for uh, five damage. Sheesh. Couldn't be me, man. I always curve out. When in doubt, curve out. You heard it here from Mr. Beats by Ash. There's a reason why I am the top content creator in this game. There's a reason why I am the top G. You know, and it all comes down to my friend Tajik. Let's go, baby. Tajik in the house. Get plus one, plus one. If your opponent controls a legendary creature, this metagaming monster. How did he know I love abusing legendaries? Guys, we're literally threatening 10, 14, 16 damage on turn three. We put this man at four HP on turn three. I'm a monster. And now my guys cannot be affected by spell damage. This is literally crazy. You know? Um, somebody go ahead and call up Wizards of the Coast because they're going to have to nerf me. Psych! You cannot nerf the top G! I come to apply a pressure on my opponent. You know? Not everybody's looking to do that. Some people come here to play. I come here to win, you know? Um, and I come here to do it in a dominant fashion. So that's what's looking like we are going to do. Let's go ahead and check out our boy, the cat. Can we look at how much our attack, our cat is? Okay. The fact the cat has trample is literally just disgusting, man. 
I don't even know what else to say. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my friend, the Herald. Drizzy's Herald. D Rizzy in the house, okay? Let's see what's about to happen next, okay? I'm literally disgusting, chat. Boom. Okay. It's looking a little easy for Mr. Beats by Ash. And that's going to wrap it up for our second game. I just want to thank you guys for getting this far in the video. It means so much to me. And as always, please let me know down in the comments what you want to see next. And as well, please check out my Twitch because once again, we are so close to 100 followers. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to do something awesome for you guys. And I want to keep bringing you this content. So as always, I hope to see you in the next one. Let's go.